What's going on? Welcome back to Movies Recapped. Today I found another hidden gem. One day, the members of Good Friends Church Camp head to camp for their retreat. Jeff and Kellenberger can't help but admire the new girl, Faith, and Danielle wonders where she's from. Curious, Danielle introduces herself to Faith and straightforwardly tells her she's attracting the wrong sort of attention because of her blouse. However, Faith just ignores Danielle and makes a silly remark about her chest, pissing the girl off. Once Danielle returns to her seat, Jacqueline decides to talk to Faith. She tells her she's brave for what she did to Danielle, but Faith says that's nothing. At the same time, Kellenberger asks Jeff to get Faith warmed up for him, but they eventually argue when the guy refuses. Afterward, camp director Doug gives a few reminders for their retreat. He also takes out a jar, saying he will put a marble inside it every time they do something good and take it out when they do something wrong. Feeling excited, he tells them they'll have a pizza party at the end of the week if they have a jar full of marbles. Concurrently, Dr. Peter Shirtcliffe arrives at a store and takes a picture of a passing school bus. He then asks the store owner where the bus is going, so the man says it's probably headed to the church camp at Big Timber State Park. Upon learning that, Shirtcliffe decides to buy ammunition and a box of J. T. Jepson's authentic lumberjack flapjack batter. Moments later, Good Friends Church Camp members finally reach their destination. Doug reminds the bus driver, Leon, to pick up the campers at the Kirkland Elementary School at 7 a.m., irritating the impatient guy. After that, Doug tells the teens that the campers will arrive the next day, saying he's assigned some tasks to help get the place ready. Then, staff member Teresa announces they've prepared a special treat for everyone. The cook, Reggie, happily reveals he's cooking a nice pancake dinner. Not everyone is excited to hear that, but Doug still tries to be enthusiastic. He asks Kendra and Courtney to go and prepare Jonah's fishing shed, and the two girls eagerly leave. Then, Teresa sends Faith and Jacqueline down to the Little Beach Volleyball Court of Bethlehem. Doug also instructs Jeff and Kellenberger to muck out the stables of Solomon, adding that they should find Alberto. On the bus, Leon takes some substance as he drives and listens to loud music. A few minutes later, he picks up two girls on the side of the road and stops somewhere quiet to have a good time with them, unaware they're being watched. As the ladies make love to Leon at the same time, a man pulling a griddle containing enormous pancakes opens the bus emergency exit. He then mercilessly decapitates the girls with an axe, leaving Leon terrified. As he panics, Leon struggles to get up and soon stands before the killer, the lumberjack man. Leon tries to bribe him with some substance, but the lumberjack man smacks his hand and impales him using his spear. As if that isn't enough, the lumberjack man uses Leon's blood as syrup for his pancakes. Back at the church camp, Faith catches Ernie spying on her and Jacqueline. The boy says he's only bird watching, but Faith doesn't believe him and takes his drawing book, seeing his indecent illustrations. Annoyed, Faith decides to keep the drawing book, sending Ernie running away. Meanwhile, Jeff and Kellenberger talk about girls in the woods. They then meet Alberto, who makes them clean the stables as he smokes their precious blunt. Jeff is pissed that they're doing all the work while Alberto gets to relax, but Kellenberger assures him the man will soon get high. Sure enough, Alberto becomes so high that he doesn't notice that the boys made two human figures using muck to take their place. He still thinks everything is fine even though Jeff and Kellenberger are already in the woods making fun of him. Alberto also looks at the picture of the woman he loves, Carmen Sita, wondering why she left him. He's clueless that the lumberjack man is behind him, and when he turns around, he sees Carmen Sita. Without hesitation, Alberto approaches the woman and smells her hair, unaware that his eyes are deceiving him. He continues to see the lumberjack man as Carmen Sita, but the big guy wearing a mask soon strangles and lifts him, decapitating him using only his hands. Then, the lumberjack man casually throws Alberto's head away. With nothing else to do, Jeff and Kellenberger watch Teresa from the cabin window as she removes her robe and applies lotion to her body. Unfortunately, Doug catches them and asks why they aren't at the stables, causing the boys to run off. After that, Doug looks through the window and sees Teresa with no clothes on. Then, when the woman notices him and screams, Doug panics and trips. At the ranger station, Shirtcliffe asks the head park ranger, Lewin Potts, to evacuate the woods. Lewin asks why she needs to do that, so Shirtcliffe says it's because the woods are haunted and everyone is at risk. Sadly, Lewin doesn't believe him and says she's busy looking for two missing hikers. Irritated, Lewin asks her colleague, Shep, to see Shirtcliffe out, but the doctor says she won't find what she's looking for on her map. Shirtcliffe then shows them news clippings about a mass killer in Big Timber who's been killing people every 30 years since 1892. That coming Tuesday, Shirtcliffe says Lewin and Shep will have blood all over their hands if they don't evacuate the woods, pissing off the head park ranger. Lewin tells Shirtcliffe not to waste her time, so the doctor just asks her to guide him to the camp. Of course, Lewin refuses and threatens to arrest Shirtcliffe if he doesn't go. 
Defeated, Shirtcliff warns the rangers they will both die before finally leaving, but Shep follows and tells him where to find the camp. Back at the camp, Ernie spies on Kendra and Courtney as they go skinny dipping. However, Ernie gets distracted when he hears something behind him, only to see a falling tree. Ernie quickly tries to avoid it, but he trips and gets crushed by the tree, and the lumberjack man uses his blood as syrup for his pancakes. Meanwhile, Jeff runs into Faith and apologizes for hitting her. Kellenberger is just behind him, and they struggle to explain what they're doing to Faith, Jacqueline, and Stacy. Jeff then follows the girls to the dining hall, but Kellenberger goes the other way to check out the cheerleaders. At the same time, Trevor makes love to Danielle somewhere in the woods. He then leaves when Danielle asks for a cigarette, not knowing the lumberjack man is there. But it isn't long before he finds the lumberjack man's enormous pancakes, and all he can do is cry out when the killer strangles him. Danielle hears Trevor screaming, but she thinks he's only scaring her and quickly dresses. Danielle asks Trevor to come out and even insults him, but she doesn't expect the guy's severed head to be thrown at her. Unfortunately, the lumberjack man soon shows up and he makes Danielle suffer by breaking her bones before tossing her toward a tree. In the kitchen, Faith prepares a box of J.T. Jepson's authentic lumberjack flapjack batter. Reggie sees what she's doing and tastes the batter, and when Jeff arrives, he asks them if they've seen his syrup. Then, when the teens say they don't know where the syrup is, Reggie leaves to look for it. Once Reggie is gone, Jeff tastes the batter and doesn't tell Faith it tastes bad. Instead, he just ignores it and rubs batter on Faith's face, and the two eventually have a food fight. The other teens soon join them, and in the end, Jeff fails to stop everyone from throwing food at one another. At the ranger station, Lewin instructs Shep to go into town and tell the sheriff they need help finding the missing hikers. Then, Lewin calls her friend, Felita, and asks her to look up Shirtcliff for her, only to be distracted by a sound from the roof. With her gun ready, Lewin looks around and comes face to face with the lumberjack man. The killer pushes Lewin so hard that she lands on the ground a few feet away from him, but that doesn't stop the ranger from repeatedly shooting him. Lewin approaches the lumberjack man when he finally collapses. Unsatisfied, she shoots the lumberjack man several times again before going inside to call for backup. However, the lumberjack man throws an axe at Lewin, hitting her in the back. Despite that, Lewin crawls toward the table and grabs anything she can reach to throw at the lumberjack man. Feeling desperate, Lewin throws a cup of syrup at the lumberjack man, causing his body to sizzle and making him flee. Then, Lewin takes the axe from her back before passing out. At the camp, Kellenberger shares a few bottles of Peach Breeze ice with Kendra and Courtney. It isn't long before they start acting silly and change into costumes, and Kellenberger proudly shows Kendra and Courtney his manhood. Sad to say, the lumberjack man arrives and ruins the fun, sending the girls running for their lives. The lumberjack man repeatedly bashes Kellenberger's head against the bulletin board, and once he's dead, he goes after Kendra and Courtney. The girls continue to run, but Kendra soon gets caught in a trap. Courtney is too scared to help her and leaves to call for help, and when the lumberjack man catches up with Kendra, he stabs her in the head with a homemade faucet. Of course, the killer drizzles Kendra's blood over his pancakes. Moments later, Courtney gets knocked down by a giant pancake as she tries to escape. With no other choice, Courtney runs and takes a different route to get away from the killer, but the lumberjack man finds her again and repeatedly hits her with his pancake. Meanwhile, Shirtcliff finally arrives at the camp and tells the good friend's church camp members they must leave. He also shows them the box of Jepson's flapjack batter, saying it's nothing more than a big lie. Shirtcliff explains that in 1892, Jepson was in big timber hunting wildcats when he smelled something sweet coming from a small shack. There, he found the reclusive lumberjack Nehemiah Easterday preparing pancakes in honor of Shrovetide, it being the last Tuesday before Lent. Easterday invited Jepson to join him, and Jepson couldn't believe how delicious the flapjacks were. Jepson then asked Easterday for the recipe in exchange for money, but the lumberjack refused and said it was an old family recipe he promised to take to his grave. Enraged, Jepson struck Easterday in the head and drowned him in his own syrup. After that, Jepson searched for the recipe in the shack and found it inside a stuffed ocelot, eventually using it to make a name for himself. After hearing the story, Faith gets mad and says it's not true. Still, Shirtcliff insists he's telling the truth and adds a demon logger is coming down there to kill them all. Also, Shirtcliff reveals that years later, on a Shrove Tuesday, Easterday returned with a hellish griddle stacked high with pancakes. He stalked Big Timber with an axe in hand, and the next day, 67 people lay dead, and only one survived. Ignoring what Shirtcliff said, Doug asks Reggie to show the doctor out. Still, Shirtcliff tells them that if the logger finishes his breakfast, he'll become more powerful than ever. He points out that the demon logger will come for all of them before leaving, making Reggie wonder if they really are in danger. Later on, Jeff follows Faith in the woods as she cries. 
Faith talks about Shirtcliff's story, but Jeff says they shouldn't believe the man. Feeling better, Faith returns to the dining hall to eat some pancakes. That night, Shirtcliff finds an injured Lewin on the road. Shirtcliff helps her and assumes she's seen the lumberjack man, and the ranger can only utter the word syrup. After helping her get inside the car, Shirtcliff quickly drives away and fails to notice that Shep is also there. Shep finds the lumberjack man's giant pancakes and tastes them, only to be attacked by the demon lager. In the dining hall, Reggie tells everyone he couldn't find the syrup for the pancakes. Then, Jacqueline says grace before eating and thanks the Lord for their food. After that, Doug asks if anyone has seen Ernie, Trevor, and Danielle, but no one knows where they are. As they eat, Doug finds Ernie's face among the pancakes. It isn't long before the lumberjack man arrives, and the first thing he does is throw an axe at Jacqueline's head. Everything descends into chaos because of that, so Reggie helps Faith and Jeff hide. As the demon logger goes on a killing spree, Doug saves himself and hides in the kitchen with Reggie, Jeff, and Faith. Doug makes it clear he's not risking his life for anyone, and the power soon goes out when the lumberjack man throws a guy at the breaker box. At the same time, Teresa gets killed when Doug refuses to open the door for her. The lumberjack man removes her implants from behind and throws them at the teen who's about to attack him, causing the guy to slip and accidentally stab himself. Doug then flees and leaves the others, but Reggie and the teens have no intention of staying there. They quickly look for a way out of that place, but the demon logger soon finds them. Unfortunately, Jeff stays behind to hold a heavy door and let Faith and Reggie escape, eventually dying when the lumberjack man stabs him with a spear. Faith and Reggie can only watch as the demon logger drags Jeff away, leaving them no choice but to run. They then hide in a barn and arm themselves to kill the lumberjack man, but, instead, they find Shirtcliff. Shirtcliff wants to help them kill the lumberjack man, saying he's discovered the logger's frailty. He gives Faith Jepson syrup and explains it will slay the lumberjack man, but before they look for the killer, Doug comes out of his hiding spot and scolds them for making so much noise. After that, Doug flees to look for another hiding place, only to run into a trap set by the lumberjack man and have his body cut in half. Meanwhile, Shirtcliff tells Reggie and Faith they must stop the lumberjack man before he finishes his breakfast. So, Faith takes a buzz saw and quickly heads to the logger's shack, where Reggie soon joins her. Reggie says Shirtcliff returned to his car to get something, but that doesn't stop them from going after the demon logger. Inside the shack, Faith and Reggie realize that the logger has already eaten all the pancakes. Then, the lumberjack man shows up, making Reggie decide to give his wrench to Faith and take the buzz saw from her. However, he struggles to turn it on, so the logger takes it from him and throws it outside. With no other choice, Reggie asks Faith for the wrench and attacks the lumberjack man, but the killer easily subdues him and throws his weapon away. Scared, Faith avoids the lumberjack man and wakes Reggie up. At the same time, an injured Shep arrives to help them, but the lumberjack man shoves his hand into the ranger's chest, takes his heart out, and puts it in his mouth. Then, Reggie tells Faith to use the syrup, but the logger throws his axe at her and hits her hand. Sadly, Faith loses two fingers, but Shirtcliff arrives and repeatedly shoots the logger. Once the lumberjack man is down, the three immediately get out of there with the syrup. The lumberjack man then follows them, so Shirtcliff asks Faith for the syrup and prepares to use it on the logger, but he fails to open it. He tries to subdue the lumberjack man by repeatedly punching him, only to be knocked down by the logger with just one hit. With no other choice, Faith takes Shirtcliff's gun and tries to shoot the logger, but she doesn't know it's empty. Upon realizing that, the lumberjack man strangles Faith and easily throws her inside the shack, where she finds Reggie's missing barrel of syrup. Faith quickly tells the guys about it, and Shirtcliff instructs her to take her clothes off and douse herself with syrup. Seconds later, Faith does as she's told and calls the logger, revealing that she's Jepson's descendant. Faith also taunts the lumberjack man, and when the logger charges at her, she quickly holds him and refuses to let go. Eventually, the lumberjack man stops moving because of the syrup, leaving Reggie and Shirtcliff relieved that Faith managed to vanquish the demon logger. However, the lumberjack man is still alive and gets up, but when Faith and the guy see him, they flee before he explodes. Later, they hitch a ride to town with Luen, and as they're about to leave, the ranger apologizes to Shirtcliff for doubting him. Hope you enjoyed it, consider subscribing, it is free. Cancel anytime.